I've put together this presentation to answer just one question. If God was to prove himself back on the earth, how would he do it? Well, hopefully I will be able to demonstrate how that might be done and in fact is done. So let's start with this man here, Brian. He was born on the 11th of January 1944 in Sydney and the sunrise to moonrise on that day was 888 minutes. There we have uh, showing you the times and showing you the calculation of 888 full minutes. Okay, back to Brian, his first wife, Eileen. He married her on the 23rd of the 4th, 1966, at the age of 1162.6 weeks old. He had a daughter with Eileen, Tracy Lee. She was born on the 4th of May, 1968, in Port Alberni. The sunrise to sunset on that day was 888 minutes. And there you have it now. 14 hours 48 minutes is 888 minutes. Uh, incidentally, Brian is 8880 days old when Tracy Lee is born on the 4th of May 1968. Okay, then we have his third wife, Michelle. She was born on the 19th of March 1974. Now Brian is 1162.6 days older than Michelle. And then we have Michelle's daughter Rhiannon, Brian's stepdaughter. She was born on the 20th December 1979, Geelong, Australia. And the sunlight duration, sunlight, sunrise to sunset was 888 minutes. Additionally, the age difference between Rhiannon, Brian's stepdaughter, and his daughter Tracy Lee is 11.626 years. Then we have Brian's brother Ronald. He was born on the 25th of February 1935. So that makes Brian 8.88 years younger than his brother Ronald. So, just through, he, through his family tree, we have generated two numbers here. We've had uh, them repeated themselves. It's quite synchronistic. I don't know what the odds are exactly. But we've generated 888 and 11626. Now, what do these numbers mean? Okay, well, the 888 number, we're going to apply that to geometry and see how it comes out. Now, geometry is the technique of using the numerical value of Hebrew and Greek words based on the value of the, their constituent letters to find a hidden meaning or sim symbolic meaning to the corresponding word. We also have another definition of geometry, a cryptograph in the form of a word whose letters have the numeric values of a word taken as a hidden meaning or the Kabbalistic method of explaining the Hebrew scriptures by means of the cryptographic significance of the words. And on the right you have um, the Greek characters and their numeric value. That's just part of it. Obviously there are more letters. So when we do apply 888 in Greek geometry, we get the word Jesus. You can see the individual letters, their numerical value on an individual basis and then the total to make that word 888. And there's just a, a Google search, 888 Jesus Gematria, and you can see there are many hits. And then there's the 11626 number. 11626 is found in the Great Pyramid of Giza in the antechamber. Uh, it's extreme length from north to south, that being 
3.26 pyramid inches. Now this information comes from that book there, The Great Pyramid, The Secrets and Mysteries Revealed by Piazzi Smythe, who's the Royal Astronomer for Scotland, when he wrote it in the 18, middle of the 18, 19th century. So it's shown you here the 11626 number coming up in other dimensions in the pyramid. Uh, one being its uh, relationship to pi and the base of the pyramid, the base of the pyramid being 365.242 sacred cubits. These are some geometric diagrams of the relationships of pi, 365.242 and the 11626 number. So back to Brian's family tree. Brian had another daughter, Nicole Eileen, with Eileen. She was born on the 2nd of November 1977. Nicole is 777 days, or if you like, 2.127 2 years older than Rhiannon. Michelle gave birth to Rhiannon when she was 32.75 years old. So these two numbers, 2127, 3275, what do they mean? Okay, well I'm going to apply these to Strong's Concordance. So what is, what is Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible? Um, you can read up on it there, but basically it's the, every word in the Bible was assigned a number. God was assigned one and various other, you'll see later. But um, it was uh, used as a codex for quick cross-referencing and that type of thing. But every number, every word in the Bible has a number associated with it. For instance, the 2127 number equals zero. Uh, I'm using a computer version of Strong's Concordance, therefore I can just type in the uh, concordance number and it will tell me what word that associates with. We can follow that through to its origin. So the 2127, two, 2127 number is zero. The 3275 number is Yakan. Now, each of these words only appear once in the whole King James Version, 1611 Bible. You can see there, number of references found once. So, with over 8,600 different words in the Hebrew Concordance, what would be the odds that the words Zia and Yakan, which are only found once, appear in the same verse? Well, not only in the same verse, but immediately next to each other. Now, I don't know what the odds of that are either. Now, if we take the 2127 Zia number and the 3275 Yakan number and add them together, we get 5402. Now, 5.402 years is the difference in time between Brian's birth and that of his sister, June. So, going back to 1 Chronicles 513, where we find Zia and Yakan, we see that there are seven names in that verse. There they are. Each of these names has a number value. As I said, it has a concordance number. So a quick referencing. The mean average of this, these numbers, is 4443.714. There's a few other decimals. The word God is found 4443 times in the King James Version 1611 Bible. And there's a page off the internet there. Showing 4443 four, four, times for the word God. It's all some strongs. So 444.3 four, four, four kilometres is also the distance between the birth locations of two of Brian's children. Born in houses built by Brian in Port Alberni in Quinell, Canada. Now here's Magellan. Magellan is standard issue for seafarers and aviators. It's accurate within three metres, I believe. Uh, much better than uh, Google Earth, which can be quite a long way out, depending on what you're trying to measure. But as you see there, the two points, you've got the latitude and longitude on the right, and you see the distance is 444.3 kilometers. So in the measurement of the Earth, God's temple, relative to locations important to Brian, bring forth many interesting synchronicities. So Brian lived with Michelle Nye, at Nell Street, Greensboro, Victoria. Michelle was his third wife. There's the latitude and longitude there. From this location, the distance to the South Pole, in my opinion, is an important landmark on the Earth. 
is 5813 kilometers. So once again, Magellan done the necessary uh, measuring and 5813.6 kilometers. So what is 5813? It's also the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza, including the missing capstone in pyramid inches. One pyramid inch being 1.00106 British inches. And this can be calculated using the dimensions of the perimeter of the pyramid and the pi angle of the sides. And once again, showing the relationship of uh, the perimeter base, 365.242 sacred cubits, and the pi angle, the value of pi, and the height being 5813. Now, there's some more geometric diagrams of the uh, casing stone angle and the relationships between pi. 365242 and 11626. So the location at Nell Street also reveals truth through Gematria. Okay, we know uh, Nell Street is on a latitude of 3742524, uh, but what's the circumference of the Earth at this latitude? Well, first I have to convert that format of latitude into uh, decimal degrees so we can use this application. So 37.42524 calculated to 37.84.56. Now I plotted that into the circumference measurer and we get 31.685.8653 kilometers. Now we get 3168 being the first four digits. Now this is where we apply it to geometria and 3168 is Lord Jesus Christ in Greek geometria. There's the table of uh, letters and their numeric values, the individual words, the individual letters, the totals of each, and the final total there, 3168 at the end. Incidentally, the, um, in order to show that not everyone life, everyone's life and family tree generates all this synchronicity and numbers that actually have meaning, um, I took a similar pool of people in my family and done the necessary calculations as far as I could. It's a little incomplete, but you can see there are no synchronicities at the moment, and also with the difference in time of birthdays, etc. as well. You can look at those in more detail, but nothing that jumps out at all. So there you have it. I'm trying to show you how the pyramid is important. Now, if, if you're wondering, well, why is the pyramid in so important? It's just a tomb that was built by Egyptians. Well, follow on and you'll see in the following presentation how you may not believe it. Frank Chalou, author and lecturer, is one of the many archaeologists who are convinced that the Great Pyramid is not a tomb. The reason that the Great Pyramid is not a gigantic tomb is evidenced by the fact that when we do examine the coffer in the King's Chamber, there are no inscriptions thereon, no embellishments, neither any on the walls, any hieroglyphs in honor of such a king and his deeds. And of course, historically speaking, there never was a body found, no evidence of that kind whatsoever. And we know that the sarcophagus couldn't have been drawn up its passages because the width of the uh, coffer would prohibit its being drawn along the passage system into this Inamur chamber. And also, the peculiar fact is that there is no lid, nor were there any fragments of such a lid uh, ever found. This lidless coffer seems to suggest that this represents the chamber of the open tomb that this room is not a tomb of death, but a room of life, further corroborated by the fact that there are ventilating tubes bringing in oxygen from the outer atmosphere into this room. In other words, there's some other signification involved with regard to the reason for the erection of the structure. Can scientific investigation shed any light on the purpose of the Great Pyramid? 
Modern explorers such as Jomard, Coutel, John Greaves, Dickinson, Lepsius, Howard Weiss, Piazzi Smythe, Flinders Petra, and Morton Edgar have surveyed and measured the pyramid. They dug for hidden passages. They measured every passage and chamber. They discovered original air passages to the king's and queen's chambers. Excavating the modern rubble, they unearthed the only remaining casing stones. They computed the height and debated the conflicting measurements of the base length. A startling new scientific theory emerged. In this theory, the pyramid's measurements teach principles of mathematics, geography, and astronomy. Mr. Jerry Leslie, a Portland, Oregon-based computer specialist, describes some of the scientific discoveries of the last 150 years. It is the scientist's role to discern truth from speculation. Like many areas of research, it is often the simple that turns out to be the most sublime. And yet it is so often overlooked. In the mid-1800s, John Taylor, a British amateur mathematician and astronomer, developed a curiosity about the Great Pyramid. He analyzed the measurements of Colonel Howard Weiss, who had just returned from an expedition to Egypt. Taylor was intrigued by the fact that the pyramid faces were built at the odd angle of 51 degrees and 51 minutes. As he studied the measurements, Taylor made an astounding discovery. The height of the pyramid was mathematically related to the distance around the base in exactly the same proportion as the radius of a circle is related to its circumference. Taylor found that considering the height of this pyramid as a radius, the circumference of that circle would be the same as the perimeter of the base of the pyramid. No other pyramid bears this ratio. The pyramid had been designed to be a geometrical solution to one of mankind's most difficult mathematical challenges, the squaring of a circle. When Taylor published his findings, other astronomers, mathematicians, and explorers began investigations of the Great Pyramid to test his theories. These men uncovered many more facts about the pyramid, facts and proportions that indicate advanced scientific knowledge on the part of the pyramid builders. One of these points, the pi proportion discovered by Taylor, was later proved to be accurate to at least four decimal points. Yet it was 2,700 years later before mathematicians computed pi to that accuracy. And not till the 16th century was it computed to six and seven decimal places. The king's chamber and coffer also demonstrate that pi proportion. This is shown in the ratio of the length to the perimeter. A second point found by some of these men was that the cross section of the pyramid fulfills the famous golden section ratio, that is, 1.618, which supposedly was not discovered until 1,000 years later by the ancient Greeks. This was found to be the exact ratio of half the base to the length of the apothem, that is, the line from the mid-base point up to the apex of the pyramid. Now let's take a look at a third point. Isaac Newton computed the sacred cubit of Moses' tabernacle and Solomon's temple and the Great Pyramid to be about 25 British inches. Sir John F. W. Herschel calculated that one ten millionth part of the Earth's polar axis would be 25.025 British inches. Herschel proposed this unit of measure to the world as being more accurate than the French meter, which had been based on the curved line from the pole to the equator. Along came Taylor and Scotland's royal astronomer Piazzi Smythe and others with a startling discovery. The number of Herschel's cubits in the baseline length of the Great Pyramid is 365.242. That is exactly the number of days in a year. This was dubbed the Pyramid Cubit and 125th part of it was called the Pyramid Inch. Many other places in the pyramid reveal this special dimension. The pyramid cubit is so astounding because it is based on the axis of the Earth. Also, exactly 100 pyramid cubits form one side of the modern British acre, computed to be one myriad millionth part of the Earth's surface area. 
Satellite measurements during the International Geophysical Year confirmed Herschel's calculations. Therefore, the pyramid builders knew the size of the Earth more exactly than anyone else until the last 200 years. All of this and many more aspects of the Great Pyramid's construction indicate higher engineering skills than we knew possible in that age. But they indicate an even more advanced knowledge of mathematics, geophysics, and astronomy. One striking fact discovered by Morton Edgar was that the odd pyramid passage angle, 26 degrees, 18 minutes, 9.7 seconds, when placed on an equal projection map, exactly passes through the city of Bethlehem. The number of years from the pyramid's construction to the birth of Jesus is indicated by the distance to Bethlehem, using the base of the pyramid as a measure. If the Great Pyramid was intended to preserve a biblical message, why has this mystery been kept hidden so long? Surely the builders must have had some idea of its purposes. Why have all generations of recorded history believed the Great Pyramid to be the world's biggest mausoleum? Another discovery of this century suggests an answer. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs have been unearthed and translated. They reveal symbolic titles for each passage and chamber. The titles of each passage read like a symbolic prophecy of the past and future. The Descent, The Chamber of the Ordeal, The Well of Life, Hall of Truth in Darkness, Hall of Truth in Light, Chamber of Regeneration, Chamber of the Open Tomb of Resurrection. Carl Hagensick, a Bible lecturer and publisher of religious books, sees the ancient Egyptian inscriptions as hints of a very detailed symbolic relationship between the Bible and the Great Pyramid. The concept of a resurrection is one that is distinctly Judeo-Christian in its origins. Therefore, when we find reference to resurrection in these ancient Egyptian inscriptions, it places the Great Pyramid symbolic story somewhat similar to that of the Jewish Messianic prophecy of the Old Testament. Now there's another theological point that is peculiar to the Hebrew and the Christian tradition, and that's the concept of the fall of man, or his descent in some ancient time. Genesis speaks about the first man, Adam, that he disobeyed God, and that he plunged the entire race into a hereditary downward course. And this idea is also picked up in the ancient Egyptian inscriptions. Now, they call the entrance passage the descent. But today, modern man doesn't have to rely on ancient Egyptian records for his knowledge of God. Perhaps the most ancient, and certainly the most reliable source of religious records, is recognized as being the Bible. And when we compare the Bible to the Great Pyramid, it's amazing to see just how closely they correspond. For instance, the Bible speaks of the ultimate destinies of men, and it speaks of them as though there were three. Now, the Great Pyramid has three chambers, three ultimate destinations. Each of these three in the pyramid is arrived at through a passage structure. Each of the destinations in the Bible is arrived at by what the Bible calls a way. Now, these three ways in the Bible are described as the broad road that leads to destruction, the narrow way that leads to life, and the highway that leads to holiness. The study of the Great Pyramid, which began as a look into an ancient artifact, becomes an investigation of the most momentous themes that concern the human race, the issues of life, purpose, origins, and destiny. Edmund Jesuit, an award-winning design engineer who relates the Great Pyramid to his interest in science and the Bible, expresses it this way. I believe the Great Pyramid could properly be called the Bible in stone. Now, what is the theme of the Bible? 
It is the life and the work of Jesus Christ. And that work has two parts. The first part is redemption, dying that man may live. The second part is restoration, giving that life to the world for all to benefit from the redemption. And uh, the pyramid depicts both parts, not only in the passage system, but in other ways as well. Now in the pyramid, the well shaft pictures the redemptive work of Jesus, providing a way of escape from the pit of death to the chambers of life. The Bible calls Jesus the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Now notice how strikingly the pyramid points to Jesus as the Lamb. In the well shaft's grotto, there's a natural rock formation projecting from the original bedrock. And this clearly resembles the shape of a lamb's head. Now this remarkable rock formation was there before the pyramid's foundation was laid. And the Bible says that Jesus was the Lamb of God before the foundation of the world. Well hopefully you see now that the pyramid is more than just a tomb built for pharaohs. Uh, but here's a couple of other tidbits you might like. Uh, location of the pyramid on the earth. Its placement is remarkable. The pyramid lies in the exact center of all the land area of the world, dividing the land mass into equal quarters approximately. The north axis, the north-south axis, 31 degrees east, is the longest land meridian. And the east-west axis, 30 degrees north, is the longest land parallel on the globe. There is only one place that these longest landlines can intersect, and that is where the Great Pyramid stands. Um, well, if the pyramid was so important, you'd think it'd be written in the Bible. Well, it is. And in Jeremiah 32, 20, God said, Which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, even unto this day. In Joshua 22, 26, Therefore we said, Let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us. Isaiah 19.19 19 says, In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. So they're trying to describe to you that... Uh, pyramid in Egypt or there will be something in Egypt which will be a witness to the Lord and Giza means border literally so the Great Pyramid stands geographically at the border of Lower and Upper Egypt and at the exact centre of the fan shaped delta formed by the Nile so in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and at the pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. So literally in the Bible it's describing where, the, where there will be an, a witness to the Lord, that being the pyramid. And the total geometry for Isaiah 19, 19, 19, 20 in Hebrew is 5449. Now 5449 is the height of the Great Pyramid of Giza up to the missing capstone in pyramid inches. 5449 is also the distance from the entrance to the dead end beyond the subterranean chamber. So regarding the missing capstone, at the head of the four corners of the Great Pyramid should lie the capstone. There it should be. Uh, the capstone is the headstone of the four corners of the pyramid. However, the capstone was never placed into position. But why? Well, the missing capstone is the stone the builders rejected, which will be described here. In Psalms 118.22, the stone which the builders refused is become the head of the corner. Now that should be pyramid, that word corner, that's something they've changed. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvellous in our eyes. Now incidentally, Brian grew up in 114 Oriordan Road. Uh, which is 118.22 kilometers from where his second wife Eileen was raised. I'm not sure if it's Eileen. 
um, well, Psalms 118 was also referred to by Jesus in Matthew 21, 42. Jesus said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. That is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. So remember, we have seen that the Bible speaks of the pyramid as the altar to the Lord. So the capstone represents Jesus, who was rejected then, and Brian, who continues to fulfil this prophecy by being rejected today. Is Brian being rejected 